All right, man, it's a rundown. It's Wednesday, June 14th. It's myself, Eddie. We have Jeff D. Lowe. We have Kirk Minahan. Today's rundown is presented by the Barcel Store. Uh, finally, some good news for America. The 4th of July merch is now available at the Barcel Store. Um, Jeff, you got anything in there, Kirk? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. You have nothing in the store, Jeff? I Not for 4th of July. I know you have a brand oh. new thing. No, not fourth of July. Yeah, we have the we have the shirt of me holding the trophy over Brandon, which is the highest selling Kirk Minahan show merch. And we have the worst merchandise in history, so that's not saying a lot. But it is the uh within like three hours I broke all the records. I don't know the shelf life of that, but um and we have the trivia championship shirt, Jeff, right? Or no? Do we Yeah, I think we're trying to get that up, which is nice. Yeah, you have yeah, it's a nice one. I got it. There's also did you see the I know you were looking for we have the Paul Revere MVP shirt and the George Washington 1776 MVP shirt as well. Okay, good. Excellent. Good. Yes. Excellent. Good. They're actually yeah. pretty honestly, they're pretty funny. I kind of like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so go check that out. Store at barcelsports.com. Uh, there's an awesome Chicago shirt in there too, uh, that we release. So uh, if you're in the market for some Fourth of July merch, it's there for you. Uh all right. So the first topic is the Las Vegas Knights winning the Stanley Cup. And Jeff, you are a fan, but I feel like we need to do a Kirk check first and mm-hmm. foremost. Mm-hmm. It seems like there's been issues at Kirk Minahan HQ today. So I just want to see how you were. Ish- oh, tech uh, disaster. So Dave Colony, my producer, uh, is out with some sort of illness. So Justin Trudell, who's been with the show two or three times, I, Portnoy retweeted him a picture of him last night. Um, he he's struggled. Shit. He's he's struggling a little bit. I, but Justin's one of these guys. Like he's been so loyal, have a job forever. Uh, we got it under control. We did the golf show with Riggs, and I think I think we're okay now. I think everything is stable here. I think. Okay, yeah. uh, that means Colinane, the best producer at Barstool, is uh-huh. in line for a raise then. Uh, yes, Colinane, the best. I would bet. Honestly, I bet maybe two producers at Barstool make more than Colinane. I'm dead serious. He is so overpaid. It is ridiculous, insane. I mean, I know you would hire him in a second, Eddie, but yeah, he's yeah. he he was. I think he's feeling good. Meanwhile, he's supposed to be sick, but Justin calls him and there's all the screw ups going on, and Colin's drive around in his car somewhere. Which is, if you're sick, you should not be in your car uh, unless you're going to the doctors. Or I I don't like that. That's not good. Not good. You got to pull at least the Mister Deeds, like where you co- <laughs> can't come yeah, in. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. You got to at least give it a little right. something. So I don't know. Can't have that. Well, all right. Uh, uh, feel better, Dave. Sure. Uh, all right, Jeff. Anything on the uh, Golden Knights here? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been seven long years since November twenty second, twenty sixteen, when I tweeted out to the world, "I'm a Vegas Golden Knights fan." Um, I pay for both the cable package and the internet package to watch all the hockey games, which is stupid if you're wondering. Um, so yeah, so it's it's been a long wait. It was exciting. I I inf- we have a former employee who kind of taunted me via text message. I won't say who it is. They may or may not be a watch salesman now. Said, hey, are you going to be in the arena for game five? I'm not. I am moving out there. And if I was out there already, I would have driven there. But I'm on a family trip to Florida. So I didn't get a chance to go. And he goes, oh, I'm going to be there. I was like, all right, well, I'm I'm not. So I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't got much for you. That's got to make me feel like I'm, I'm missing out now. But it was crazy. I, I texted uh, everyone's good bud here, Ryan Whitney, uh, former uh, Olympic silver medalist. He said, as good of an environment he's ever seen over the hockey games. It was absolutely bananas. It was awesome. And also scoring nine goals in a Stanley Cup clinching win is, is kind of as cool as it gets. So if you've never been to if you ever chance to go to a Vegas hockey game, it's like a top tier must, especially if you're like a bachelor party, like ditch anything else you have going on during the day. Like take go to a hockey game. It's a great time. They're awesome. Kirk. I don't know anything. I don't know anybody in the team. I know their coach is the old Bruins coach, yep. uh, Bruce Cassidy who I saw one time in Winchester, the town I grew up in and he lived in, and he came up to me at CVS and fist bumped me and said he was a fan of my old EEI show. So once you oh. do that, you could do it. Like, it doesn't matter what you do after that. So I'm very happy he won uh, the Stanley Cup. So I'm happy for Bruce Cassidy, who fist bumped me once. And I think might have a hairpiece. I'm not sure, but seems like a nice guy. So I'm happy for him. I did to make it just, I mean, we don't have to spend the whole time on this because we got, we got US Open Golf we can talk about next. But I will say, I wonder how much pressure this puts on like the Raiders now. And NFL and, and if they move there with baseball, completely different vibe. Hockey is a tougher thing to pack with away fans because it's, you know, not out on the weekends always. Like there's still a strong fan contingent in Las Vegas and the Raiders games are packed out. But like, a lot more away fans at those at those NFL games because it's like you know it's gonna be a weekend event thing. I'm wondering how much pressure it's gonna put on you know 
Vegas to win some NFL stuff. I think it's more teams, to it's make really it like an experience because you're you're right. I went to a game and it's it's legit. It, it, it's it's cool out there, and it was just like a random Friday night game against the Sabers. So uh, they did a good job, like making it a real thing and not just like some candy ass tourist thing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, like you said, U.S. Open starts tomorrow. Um, Kirk, you're the golf guy. You just did a show with Riggs. Uh, what mm-hmm. what in the U.S. Open? Well, if you, uh, I'm sure you guys remember this very well. I did the four play live event last year and picked Matt Fitzpatrick to win the U.S. Open, um, which was impressive that he did it. More impressive when you realize that he literally had Dan Rapport's mouth on his penis for the entire 18 holes. He walked across the course, which is, if you think about it from a golf perspective, Eddie, not easy to swing a club when that's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, unfortunately, my pick to win this week stinks. Like, it, I think Scotty Shuffler is going to win. Um, he's plus 600, so I wouldn't go, you know. It, his numbers right now, uh, his ball striking numbers are like otherworldly stacked, like as, as good as Tiger 2000. His putting is terrible. Uh, I think it's going to be a week where, again, from a gambling perspective, a bunch of stars, are, I think Rom is going to be in the mix. I think Victor Hovland, who has been incredible since the Open Championship, played in the last group of the Open Championship, played in the second last group of the Masters, nearly won the PGA and won the Memorial, finished the top 10 of the players. You know, all the stars right now, are Rom won the Masters. Uh, you know, Rory finished in the top 10 last week, finished in the top 10 of the PGA. All these guys are kind of rounding in the form. So, I, you know, I, I, there's like a sleeper out there. If somebody's looking, um, you know, uh, Hatton's playing really well right now, and he's like 25 to 1. Do I think there's going to be some crazy Cinderella story this week? I do not, which I think is going to be good. And by the way, the other thing I love at the USGA for years when I was a kid, they, they even when they had it at Pebble Beach when I was a kid, even when Tiger won, they would finish it at like six o'clock, seven o'clock, like pebble, uh, uh, like East Coast time. Now these West Coast majors will finish in prime time uh, on the weekends, and, uh, which is awesome. Like you know, nine, eight, nine, ten o'clock on Saturday on the East Coast, nine o'clock Central, or whatever. You're gonna be watching golf, which is fantastic. I love the course. Looks like I was talking to Riggs. Looks great. So I think it's gonna be. Uh, a pretty great U.S. Open this week. They, what do they, you think seem- about uh, your guy Jay Monahan pulling a colon and he's just driving around with an undisclosed illness? Or, or are you? Well, <laughs> uh, well, again, uh, you know, I, I don't want to mention my friend Dan Rapport twice, but he was like, uh, people who are making fun of this are assholes. And I'm kind of like, well, I get it. Like, you know, it, probably something's wrong with him. But boy, the timing seems really weird that Jay Monahan yeah. is coming down. Now he, now he may very well be doing that. Maybe a, a huge coincidence. But I'm sorry, when you do this, like when you drag 9-11 families in front of you to take to take the shrapnel and then throw them out, like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't believe you when you say shit like this. Now, I may turn out to be totally wrong, and if I am, I hope he's going to be fine. But that looks, first of all, the timing's really weird, just odd. And I've had enough of these people, the golf journals are trying to spin this, like, oh, Liv's not in control, the Saudis aren't in control, like, Jay, like, like bullshit. They are, it's their money. Like, who do you think Jay Monahan reports to now? Like, the Saudis run professional golf now, whether you like it or not, whether you don't care. Like, that's the reality of the situation. I don't, I don't think Monahan will be – I don't think Monahan has any real allies. Like, the players don't want him. Rom ripped him the other day. So, like, six months from now, nine months from now, he'll be gone. He'll be out of the picture. I uh, I sprinkled I sprinkled Rom, but also – not sprinkled. I hit Rom, but then I sprinkled uh, Hideki Matsuyama and Ricky him Fowler too for really yep. no reasons. Yep. But yep, Matsuyama. I, I, I did see well. the the note, and I'm sure you talked about it with with. I mean, I, I you might have, but I, I did see the note, which is kind of exciting because you get the classic U.S. Open rough and all the videos going viral. But it sounds like the sounds like the players are excited about the scoring opportunities on the court. You said there's a lot of yep. more often more than usual scoring chances where you can really create and, and, and attack at this course. Uh, yeah. which, is, which is exciting because the open yeah, I think it, it, yeah 10 12 under my win they're saying this week which is good i think every once in a while there should be u.s open like that. i like when they get the shit kicked out of them too but if it's going to play like that and guys are it's, plus it's a new course which i think is immediately to see if yeah it, sometimes it, sometimes it lands and sometimes these new courses don't land it feels like this is going to be one that that uh that sticks so I'm, I'm i am i'm definitely looking forward to it how do you rank the majors kirk obviously i assume masters is one did you yep. two through four is British usually regarded as number two or? Um, I think, I think put it this way. One is almost unanimously the masters four is almost unanimously the PGA though. The PGA has gotten good over like, it's become a, a really good tournament. And I think everyone kind of flips two and three. I'd go one masters, 
if it's a if it's a U.S. Open where guys are getting destroyed, that's always two for me. Or if the open weather is bad, I'd probably go Masters, Open Championship, U.S. Open, PGA. I think. All right. Uh, third topic here: uh, the Oakland A's fan fans boycotted the relocation by showing up to a game. Uh, they had twenty eight thousand fans in the stadium yesterday, all chanting "Sell the team." Uh, Jeff D. Law, what do we got on this? Seven game win streak, and they're not the worst team in baseball. The Royals, what a what an all time like oh oh shit like moment for the Royals. If I I pay attention a little bit more closely to the Royals because I am a, a like Cleveland fan, so I'm I'm always looking at the central standings, and it's been kind of the quiet thing all season. You're like, man, the Royals suck ass too. Like the Royals are historically also terrible. And all it took was just one little win streak by the A's. And now the Royals are the worst team in baseball and also just historically terrible. I don't know. I mean, the fan thing, I don't think I, – I can't imagine. I am i can't pretend I'm an expert on this. I can't imagine it's going to make much of a difference at all. I know there's been some a bit of a voting issue in Vegas in the stadium. Um, I think that's probably the bigger issue than any fan showing up. It's cool to see. I mean, I guess give it a try. It's, it, it, the stadium's a dump. It's a piece of shit. Mount Davis sucks. Um, the, the A's have always been behind the eight ball in that sense, but I, I can't, I'm, I like, I think the only thing that could really stop this, I imagine would be a voting issue in Vegas. Does this like this whole thing the last couple of years, I understand they have a nice winning streak, but does this is like affect like rewatching Moneyball. Like, you know, the plot of Moneyball was that Billy Bean was so much smarter than everybody else in the room, which I always felt was kind of nauseating, but like, is, is is history proven that like maybe these like stupid scouts who were hayseeds and all these other doubting general managers, maybe like, were they maybe not wrong? Now he doesn't I, have, I like, don't like that. He's still there. Like for the legacy of the movie Moneyball, it's not good. He needs to go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he needs to go. Like it doesn't, you know, yeah, it doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to, it would be like, it would be like if Herb Brooks came back for like six more Olympics and they lost each hockey, like <laughs> the first round, like 14, nothing to the Soviets they didn't every time. For a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. They just, <laughs> he was just, it was this, I feel like it's on all the time. And like, it's that's, you know, every scene, Billy Bean is like really, really smart. And everybody else is like comically cartoonishly stupid. And like, well, does that really work? That like, you, know, you don't have these three pictures anymore. Or like, was that really it? I, I, I don't know. I, I, that's what I think of when I see the A's. And I'm like, Billy Bean is still there. He's like a hundred years old. Like now he's like an old man. Like what, what's, you know, I, I don't know. I like, I wouldn't mind seeing a Brad Pitt sequel now where they just absolutely suck. Just, <laughs> like, like just a depressing, just a slog for two hours. A depressing the, uh, movie. The owner in the movie is underratedly the dumbest person in the yeah. movie. Too. Yeah. He's he like, comes off as such a schmuck. Just a rube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, you want some money? Yeah, we can't give you that money, but yeah, yeah. So I'm doing know. a great I don't... job, Billy. Just keep yeah. it up. Yeah, he's he stinks. You know, it's hard, Kirk. I, I I'm sure you feel the same way. It's it's hard to fathom being in a city where you could like lose one of your teams. And I know oh. hypothetically that could happen to Boston or Chicago, but probably not, right? Right. Uh, isn't it weird to think about how often this happens and to be on the other side of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think of like, you know, like my son's like 11. He's not a lunatic sports fan. Like I was at 11, but I picture him and one of his buddies. If you know, I don't know, the Celtics just left like the Celtics, are, you know, the Patriots famously almost moved to St. Louis and then almost moved to Hartford, but Hartford yeah. area. But I mean, they John really Roland. almost moved. Yeah. They almost, they almost moved to St. Louis. Like that almost happened. And for me at that time, like I would wake up in the morning for those, whatever that stretch was and like go downstairs and read the newspaper. And I was like, Holy shit. Like, if they go, my life will never, ever be. And there's got to be a kid, a bunch of kids who whose life, no matter how much they suck or how bad the park is, who care like about the Oakland A's that way. And once they move, like you could pretend it's the same, but it's definitely not the same. It's just, it's just not. I mean, I grew up not really an NFL fan. Like I right. liked like Brett Favre and stuff, but like I didn't have the Browns for like the first section of my like life that I could know anything. Because right. they moved when I was four, and he, and that that is the kind of crazy thing. It the the context of the Browns moving. I mean, I mean, Kirk, you remember that, like, and I just know because of my dad and just like history because he grew up in Aurora outside of Cleveland. The Browns moving was so insane because there weren't attendance issues. The stadium was a piece of shit, but like they were making AFC championships. They were still a competitive team. You know, they had good players. They had good people in the front office. Like 
them moving was still insane in the context of all these other moves that have taken place where, you know, it's like the fans are not really there. You know, they're never teams are never winning. It is like it is unfathomable to think about that. They move that team. And, it's, I, it, and I don't think Oakland's getting an expansion team if that happens again. So right. I mean, no, they're you know, not. When, when, yeah, when especially like gone, the immediate expansion, yeah, right? Yeah. When they're gone, they're they're gone. Yeah. And they have that like perfectly 80s juice where, you know, Canseco, Maguire, Ricky Henderson, where they were cool. Everyone loves their uniforms. It is kind of one. This and the San Diego Chargers are the two where I was like, they should just kind of stay there. They should be there. But, I mean. Yeah. The San Diego I, thing is – the L.A. thing is insane to me still. Well, but. And I put the – for me as a kid, I put the Sonics in there too. Like the idea that the Sonics aren't, you know, aren't in Seattle is – and I know they're, you know, they're, they keep talking about is, – is a team going back there? Is that – I keep hearing that. That is – I think that's – I'm always confused by that, but I'm pretty sure that is a thing that's happening. I will say the family that removed them from Seattle and moved them are monsters. We'll just leave it that way. Absolute monsters. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're hinting at expanding. Okay. And it's it's I know Vegas, it's it's likely to be Seattle and Vegas is like what it sounds like. Yeah, there are there are there are kids when they moved who are adults now who are affected psychologically because of what the Bennett family did to those kids. There will be a class action lawsuit at some point. There should be, hopefully. Um, next topic here. Uh, the guy faked his own funeral. Um, <laughs> and he, he, his wife and his kids ran on it, but I guess the extended family were not. And uh, at the funeral, he landed in a helicopter and he, uh, just hopped out and surprised everyone. Um, Kirk, what do you got on this guy? This was not your dad, right? Jeff, it was not mine either. Just He's to, not. Just unfortunately. Yeah, it was, yeah. When I saw nice. it, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a it's a bold play i mean it's teaching i guess the, i don't think i don't think the intended lesson would really land with me after that though It'd be more like you're just no. a fucking asshole like what the, what is wrong with you i wouldn't be like you know what i really have a new perspective of what kind of person you are i don't think would you do that is that any move or no well the there, there, here's the thing too there's a quote that says uh my family hurts me often i never get invited to anything nobody sees me <laughs> this ain't gonna help dude yeah, this is not progress <laughs> I don't think I know anybody in the world who would do this. I don't think. Yeah, I would. I would imagine if you're the the dad and you're not getting invited by the family, nine out of ten times, it's probably a you thing. It's I think probably so. not the the other way around. It is the oldest thing though. Like I would be, I would love to watch like a like a on television like watch my own wake and funeral. I'd give anything like that. That's one of those things I'd pay a lot of just to see who's there. Just to see the small talk, just to see who's kind of happy, <laughs> like just who's truly see... who's truly tearing up and who's yeah, or who's like, what's the cut on who doesn't show up? Like, like I don't know, like Eddie, like we don't know. Like if I died tomorrow, right? Like if I finally, if I finally cashed in all these false promises over the years and called it a day, you're not flying in from Chicago for that. You, probably not. No, but you know, if I could get a cheap flight, it's not. Yeah, a... but Jeff, but like I, if I was watching and Jeff wasn't there. I'd be, I'd be like, that's, I'd be disappointed. Yeah, I would, I would, I would attend for sure. Okay, good. Yeah. So Eddie, Eddie ironically, I think Eddie is almost like the Mendoza line, that kind of person. <laughs> I think. I would fly out for Cullinane though. If he doesn't make it through this sickness, I will fly out for that. I will pay for that. I'll be so happy. I'll be paying for everybody. It'd be like one of the, I'll be paying. Maybe Cullinane, you know, Eddie, maybe Cullinane's doing this. Maybe he's, this is one of these tests where he's going <laughs> to, he's going to fly in. He's so dumb though. He'll crash his fucking plane when he flies, and he'll actually. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't mean to answer the call earlier. He's like, "Shit, I got to reset now." <laughs> He's gonna do it all over again. It is a bold move by that guy, though. I will say. He, I like it says he lost one hundred sixty five thousand followers on TikTok. <laughs> that's that's a massive exodus of followers. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and then there's also another uh, funeral story where an Ecuadorian woman who was pronounced yes, dead, she woke up in her casket. Right. That's <laughs> that is like the ultimate. That's like the uh, that's the ultimate scary thing. Like being so, I did a live show a few months ago, and it started out with me being carried out in a casket. Yeah, and we tried it at the beginning in in the back room because they were hiding me. They put the casket, closed it for a second, and I was like, "No fuck!" After one, I was like, "There's no fucking way." And I, I saw this woman w was not it was not a closed casket, but like I, the most being buried alive, putting the I think is actually my number one fear. I think I'm super claustrophobic. It's probably. Top two or three fear. Wait, so that casket never closed the one you were in besides that for that second? Just for that second. Literally, we tested it. Justin's who's here now. He was part of it as well. We closed it for a second. We had a little, I forget what it was, that kept it open a little bit so I could breathe. I couldn't, I could not breathe when, like, I mean, I could, but mentally, 
I wasn't able to breathe and that thing was closed. I was freaking out. I, I always think of uh, Uma Thurman and Kill Bill when she punches her way out of the uh, out of the casket. That's how I was feeling. It's very scary. There, there's a there, survivors had that challenge in the past, and I've always said oh. that's my number one non-starter. There's a good uh, Ryan Reynolds thriller called Buried, where he's yes. buried alive the entire yeah. movie. Yeah. If you don't that that will give you some anxiety yes. if you don't like that because that that shit freaks me out. Right. I don't even like actually slides at the water park. The no. The, um. Wait. What? What if someone corked that up when you and Harry were going down, Kirk? You know, <sighs> that's true. Jesus, and now you're ruining everything for me. I hadn't Sorry. thought of that. <laughs> well, did you see the? Did you see the mock-ups? <laughs> I think Dante blogged about it. We they've been around for a few years now. Of like the new potential, like low cost airline where you're kind of sitting yes. underneath the seat. Yes. In, something that no close to my face. I don't even like the bullpen. No way. Yeah. No way. No chance. I need yeah. to see stuff in front of me. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, have you seen the Mr. Beast video where he's buried alive for 40 hours? Oh, I'm a big Mr. Beast guy. Yeah. It's a great. Have you seen that, Kirk? I don't know if, if you get into that at all. No, my kid loves Mr. Beast. No, I didn't watch that. No. Yeah, it was a good one, but it's still like it was like a clear casket, and it's still. Oh my god! Mr. Beast was behind Pop Punk uh, going to uh, the first uh, best uh, best bar, best bar stool, best bar for the college town because he's from oh, the right? Carolinas, and Mr. Oh. Beast like enters off the road, and and the, <laughs> at that time we didn't we didn't really know who he was. Yeah, he was behind it. Oh no shit! Little, little, little bar stool inside crazy. story. Now he's a what billionaire? Yeah. yeah. Uh, last story, uh, the search history of a woman whose husband died from a fentanyl overdose. She was outed as her murderer. She went on a talk show and then they flipped the script. Like, <laughs> hey, we got searches that include if someone is poisoned, when does it go down in the death certificate as what is lethal doses of uh, fentanyl? Um, crazy stuff. Just... By the way, we went, we went three West coast sports stories and three death stories. That's what we <laughs> yeah. did here today. It's <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, as somebody who solved a murder, uh, I, I applaud that. But you know, I, this happened. This happened as a, a case match just beginning of the year where this woman Anna Walsh died, and her husband did searches like, how do you dispose of a woman who weighs like exactly what she weighed? I, I never understand why these guys just don't like three weeks before go in the car to a library like ninety miles away and just search. Like, why are they? What they've never watched Law and Order? Or they don't. Uh, I don't even understand it. I don't get it. Like uh, nobody, people aren't that dumb, are? I guess they are that dumb. They are, yeah. But it, it does always. It always seems to come down to this, which is crazy. You would think they'd have a little, like if 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 they think that. I guess I guess they're that stupid. Or like I would at least mix it up and like do a Google search. Like I don't know, like what to do if I think uh, her best friend is trying to kill her. So, so, yeah. Something, yeah. To, something yeah. to at least I don't know. Throw money the waters the a little bit because it is. It is. It is. What what show was this? Uh, it was ABC. Uh, oh, Good Things Utah. Good Things Utah. Good things Utah. <laughs> a local yeah. ABC talk show. This shit is always happening. Get exposed Utah by the and... local, like the local, not even That's the local tough. news. That's tough. The local talk show. That's My tough. favorite Google search she had was luxury prisons for the rich in America. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Kirk, you mentioned the case, your your mm -hmm. crime podcast where you did solve a murder. I There's, did. I watched a show on the plane today. Uh, Kaylee uh, Kiwiko from. Uh, yeah, she's with Chris Messina, right? She's in a new show called uh, Based on a True Story, which is a, it's like all about a crime, like crime podcast, crime yeah. podcast. And Any they good? go to. They, uh, so it's, it's honestly just only murders in the building and flight right. attendant, which she's also in. It's like, it's very similar. I, I guess she just does murder shows now. I, I mean, okay. I was entertained on the flight. Um, yeah. there was a scene that there's some nudity at the turn the phone, which kind of, and I, whenever there's something on like a movie on a plane that I, that is like nudity or something, I just assume everyone has now seen it and is now like laughing at me. So right. other than that, it was, it was an easy plane watch, but they go to a crime podcast convention. Would, would you Whoa. ever take the case to that? The crime mean, con in Vegas. Sure, I would do that. I have to bring Steve and Dave. I have to bring all the yeah. But I, I'm not. I'm not opposed to that. Sure. I mean, you know, yes. I think yeah. I would not be opposed to that. Sure. Why not? I just. I was just. I'm like. Like the case needs a booth at Crime Con. That that's a thing that. they do in Vegas. Oh, what a crowd that would be. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen that scene, Jeff. I saw that. It's uh, a it's, it's a decent show. Worth watching. Worth watching. Yeah. Um, all right, after show, Kirk, you are almost a week removed from from winning the title. What's 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 the feelings now? You know, I'll put the hat back <laughs> on again. It's funny you mentioned that. Hey. But uh, 
you know, my initial reaction was uh, I thought Rico in particular was probably spiking the football a little too much. I wanted to move on and get ready to repeat. No one's ever repeated. Uh, but then I saw PFT whining about cheating and stuff. And he was saying, he was like defending Brandon. And my rule is this, like if I had lost in the finals and people dumped all over me, you have to do it because I'm so obnoxious in this. I talk so much shit. You have to eat shit. Brandon Walker, there are certain people, like everyone says everyone's entitled to a defense legally. I'm not sure I agree with that. Like Ted Bundy, the Marathon Bombers, Brandon Walker. There are some people who just, there's no defense, like to defend Brandon Walker, there's no reason to. So when they started playing this card, though, there was people were yelling out Durham. At this, it's bullshit. Like, quit your whining. You lost. I gave you a gift by, by punting the movie niche question just to keep things interesting. I mean, if I, if I answer that correctly, the it's a blowout. So we gave you a gift and you still couldn't beat us. So, I mean, we were vulnerable and we still won. So now I am, I think you were on the group text, Jeff, where I said, look, guys, be as obnoxious as you want. Like, fuck it. We're going to go. We are going to go all in here. So get ready. I will not break this team up. Jeff made the ruling. Rico can't retire. Uh, we could never, ever, just for content and views and buzz, never get rid of the electricity that is uh, Quigsy. So we have to, uh, we got to keep rolling on with this team. We are not, this team is not breaking up, but it still feels, you know, it's like, Eddie, you're up there. You're up on the big stage. I mean, it is when you're up there, people can make fun of it. it the nerves are, the nerves are real. Oh yeah. I, uh, I said it on your show, Kirk, when I called in. And Eddie, you can attest. The my only disappointment from the championship from that whole night was, and we had a meeting about this yesterday, kind of like a post mortem about like what we can change, what we can do differently next year for live shows. And I and we we all said we need to get a better microphone that that pumps in the crowd noise Mike's into the, the crowd? broadcast yeah. a little more because it was you man like I, I'm bummed if you watch the dozen at home, you cannot understand how fucking loud it was, especially for the first Rico phone a friend. When that bad boys chant was going, I, I, we, nobody could hear themselves think Fran was telling people I know afterwards. She's like, honestly, had they thrown out had you thrown out Durham and not used it. She's like, I would have never known. We, we couldn't hear a word they were saying. It was that loud, that raucous, which was I'm not even complaining. That's awesome. Uh, it, it was a really cool environment for that. My, my other takeaway was this was, you know, Brandon was vomiting over himself basically in the first game. And Eddie, your team, if you guys win that, that bonus round, you're winning that game and you're in the finals. Then anything can happen in the finals. Like you guys were, and I think it was the Quiznos one where you guys said it and wound up going with something else. And that's how, like for us, we won by one point to get into the tournament and then won the last game by a point. So it's like, once you got to that, Eddie, it was just it was luck, you know. Eddie and Clem, Eddie scored 10 points in their match against the experts and Clem yeah. scored nine and they lost. Yeah, yeah. Leap year is tough too. Leap year was a tough beat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's tough. Did you? I mean, granted, people are like, "Duh, it was the final four, but there was definitely more of a palpable sense of like, "Holy shit!" That night, rather than Boston or any of the live shows, I for been. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's no, how we're it, changing things too. And like, that's not like that's not to say that those will now be the same energy because the final four will always be more important. But that's why, like, like we said, if you don't know, we're twenty teams this season. Teams that want to get into the last four spots, all this, all 16 teams that made the tournament can return next season. If they want to break up, they can. Four more spots, 20 teams max. Um, the live shows, we're going to say if you win a live show, you get an automatic berth into the tournament. 12 teams make it, four groups of three. So you play, you're guaranteed two matches in the tournament. And then the team that wins each group makes the final four. So it's not a single elimination. It won't be as sexy as like a bracket, but in the end, uh, the the number the biggest feedback we always get people want to see the good and entertaining teams the most that's what we're gonna give you we're gonna give you more of the good and entertaining teams um so that that's what you get Jeff be honest I, this this is your show obviously but be honest how much of this is just you'd like to just change stuff because of like it interests you more like you just like the little new wrinkles a a little bit but I I was pretty satisfied with a lot of what went on this season I think honestly it's it's be different of like adding on like me adding more teams last year was me just like, oh, I got, I got to like live enough. Now I like, I, it's more about me scaling down. I've talked to Kirk about this. I really want to scale it down more to be like, you know, it's not oversaturated. Everything matters. Every match matters. And I want to make the tournament feel like you're getting the good teams and the entertaining teams and they're getting, that's the hardest thing for me. 
I hate watching like the smock in your mom match. I hated that one of those teams is only going to play one match. I hated that only the baddies and up like the honkers only have to play one or booze pony. So that's my thing is you want to see the entertaining good teams more and give teams a shot. If they lose one after like playing all year, they, you know, they, they're still alive a little bit. But you're right. There's a little bit of that that tinkering, but I'm pretty satisfied where we are now. That's why I banned Rico from retiring. Yeah, can't retire. Even Kirk any was other, doing uh, retiring. Kirk was going to retire. That would have been a good a good thing. Rico kind of took his bit. So. Would have been a good thing for the league if I retired. No, like you're you being like, hey, am I going to retire? Am I not? Like you already oh, did yeah. that, and then on stage you're like, I'm not going anywhere. So you. So I told Rico, you can't just then do his thing. He just I'm not the most creative guy, but yeah, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I'm like, come on, like he just did that. <laughs> Any other rumored movement, Jeff, that is of interest? Um, I know there's gonna be some change with the Chicago team. I don't know what they're gonna do. I'm sure I, you know, I know Carl's gonna be on a different team. I him and Castellani doing a lot of content. I don't know if they'll do something together. I know Castellani says a free agent. I know uh, Chief and Dave, Chiefs been a top 10 player all last year. Uh, so I don't know what that's, what's going to happen there. There's going to be some movement. Other than that, I don't know. A lot of people want teams. And we're going to have a preseason where they're going to battle it out. It's going to come down to fan vote and, and we'll see who gets in. But as of now, only one team's in next year's tournament. Uh, I will say that the, the, the times the I've call. been, which has not been, it, it's been more than one, a good, good few amount of times. Right. The times I've been in mental facilities, my Wi-Fi when they give you the phone is pretty good. So I think Castellani and Carl okay. should be okay as long as they get a third with them. Somewhere there, but again, I'm not sure how good that person. But you never know when you find a good trivia guy. I mean, who knows? I have no idea. That's the rundown, Kirk. Thank you. Sure. Uh, goodbye, guys. Jeff. Jeff. Anything else? Go Knights. Go. Um. Congrats again, Kirk. Uh, Thank you. Congrats for the third time. Uh, all right. That's the rundown. Back tomorrow. Uh, see you guys there.